From this video, you're going to be learning the following typical themes of the Jobava London. How to squeeze the Benoni setup when Black plays an early c5. How to play the typical endgame for this variation after using the Queen h2 idea. How to absolutely demolish the Czech peer according to my chessable course. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you my secret way of dealing with the slap setup, avoiding the most common bishop d3 plans. Starting off with the white pieces, gonna be going d4 and heading right into the Jobava land with knight c3. Ideas of e4, so. Uh, opponent actually going for c5, which is pretty interesting of a move. And I think we're just gonna be going for the most aggressive line, just playing d5. I don't think with a knight on c3 it really makes much sense to like deviate. Like in the normal London, uh, I usually advise my lower rated students to, to deal with us, uh, let's say, when they go c5 to maybe play something like c3. Uh, well, to like uh, keep it simpler in this position. But okay, I mean, at this point, once you have the knight on, on c3, there's not like really much room from, for, for creativity. Maybe DC could be interesting, but I don't think it gives white uh, an objective edge. And uh, yeah, just going for the main lines with D5. He goes E6, which is gonna be taking back with a pawn pretty much all the time and gonna be developing. Uh, this bishop goes to C4. I'm trying to like understand whether it makes sense to play this bishop B5 check that uh, it's quite topical in in some of these lines, but I don't think in this super particular one. So I think just developing to c4 is just fine. Just making sure this pawn is uh, gonna be uh, well defended. You can just castle whenever they play a6. We're gonna be going a4, stopping them from pushing b5 because then we have takes. And after knight d7. Uh, I'm trying to remember whether we are supposed to play a5 or not because on one hand this looks actually very good because we're fixing the weak square but it might also help black to uh, speed up the initiative on the queen side a little bit after b5 because if you think about it um, if we just play rook e1 super flexible they can still play rook b8 but they are not going to be threatening to go b5 because you can obviously just take and they don't really get any compensation you see knight g4 with this idea so just to stop that i think i'm going to be playing bishop f4 ideally they'd be able to play bishop f6 but that will actually just hang the pawn so this is a pretty annoying threat now and yeah i think black has a pretty pretty unpleasant position now Okay, we see bishop f6, but that is running into what I just pointed out. Take the free pawn. I guess opponent simply forgot about that. And uh, how are we gonna, going to continue? Mm, could just play queen d2. And then when they go knight e5, you know, we could potentially just trade everything. Another thing would be to maybe play h3, sort of force knight e5 right away. Could also start with like rook e8 if I want to. Have a pretty big choice. Also, knight e4 is not like a completely stupid move. But then maybe they can take the pawn on b2. There's rook b1 though. Kind of not believing bishop takes on b2 as a move there. But I don't want to give back the pawn for like uh, no reason if I don't have to. So I think we're going to do this and then we're going to be playing queen e1. I think that's like cleanest. Just fighting for the e-file right away. And now, if they play knight e5, I think we have ideas to take and then play f4 in some positions. So, I think this is pretty nice. And now, whenever we'll be playing h3, I simply don't want to allow this kind of move to happen. Again, like, even if they get into knight e5, it's not going to be, like, a disaster. But black is going to be getting some kind of compensation, some, you know, finishing development and... If I can avoid that, uh, I think I should try to at least. Okay, I wanted 95, and then if they take with a knight, I'm, I'm going f4. That was the point. And I think that wins. So now f4 is not amazing because they have check. And I think we're losing maybe. But maybe just take, and I think they have to take with a queen. Yeah, because knight takes on e5 was obviously 
going to allow f4 and then black is losing a piece because of the pin and after knight after queen takes on e5 we can simply go for the send game i believe where we're up a pawn and we have a nice move to start with which is rook e1 because they are unable to collect the bishop because of the back rancor and they have to play something like f6 i'm assuming and then we can just like move the bishop maybe exchange sack is not entirely stupid but it's definitely uh super unnecessary could also just defend with b3 i've got like many moves here probably just keeping the bishop is best i'm assuming could also go to f1 uh the thing is just gonna be playing this move with the idea to attack that pawn so maybe bishop b3 makes sense then they have c4 bishop a2 bishop f5 but then maybe f4 and then we win the pawn on c4 so i think that's maybe cleanest i don't know though i just kind of like that idea if they play c4 that pawn is actually you know it looks active for the time being but i have a feeling it might be pretty weak at some point so okay they go there can we go d6 then they want c4 so i don't think it's we shouldn't be allowing that but first start with knight f4 kicking the knight um yeah knight has to move they go to g6 can play g3 defending i think throwing in d6 is also a very serious candidate and then just playing knight d5 on d6 they'll probably go to f8 and then knight d5 bishop c6 something like that we can play maybe knight c7 yeah i think that looks pretty good so i'm giving a check Assuming king there, and then I want to play knight d5, defending this pawn. And on that, I want the knight there. And it's kind of hard to find a good square for the rook. That's what made me go for this in knight d6s. It's gonna be super, super unpleasant move. Yeah. Hitting the rook. This is big threat, and king is also in trouble. Rook d8 is running into a fork. That was the initial thing that I've seen. And they have to choose probably between these two squares, but then this is gonna be kind of devastating, anyways. So I thought we can go for the check, collect the pawn at least. Uh, yeah, could also maybe play d7, then knight c5. That's actually pretty, looks pretty clever. Maybe they have king e8 to defend against it, but it, it should be lost, obviously, somehow. King f7, just d7. And after the bishop takes, we have knight c5, and we're winning the bishop. Yeah, discovery check, and then just collecting this guy. I think that was the easiest win. Yeah, okay, opponent also resigns, which is, which seems pretty fair. I think that was actually maybe a pretty accurate game, but we've got like a, a superb position from the opening. So that's kind of how you want to be refuting this uh, lines when they are playing for this early c5 Benoni. You just play d5, e4. You get into this symmetrical position where you have extra space and it's pretty much always uh, going to be pleasant for you with the extra space. Remember that bishop c4 is a good move. It's a bit counterintuitive because it's kind of blocked by this pawn but um, the bishop is playing a nice role in keeping that uh, pawn really safe and uh, white is just um, having a very very easy play in the structures uh, all right I'm gonna go d4 we've got a game in the meantime and uh am gonna be going for the job of a london and i guess d5 just gonna be playing bishop f4 we see bishop f5 just gonna play e3 and then uh try to hunt the bishop Okay, we see e6, I'm gonna be playing f3 and then just going g4. Trying to hunt down that bishop. We see bishop d6. That's actually like an interesting move. I don't see it like very often. I think I'm just gonna be playing g4 and h4. How's actually this line? Maybe I'm supposed to play knight e2. I think like bishop f4, pawn takes on f5 should be good for me. Yeah, I don't wanna like play h4 because you can then take and then go h5 and that's looking bad for me strategically just gonna go knight e2 taking with a knight then this and that generally we do we do castle long indeed or sometimes the king stays on f2 hans gives knight e2 immediately yeah i might have messed up the move order a bit i think knight e2 is the right way to start but i realized it only after i played it so it was, it was a little bit too late uh we see h6 yeah, I think you can just go like queen d2 and castle long. I feel like I have the easier play. Gotta watch out for like knight b4 to win we castle. That could be annoying. <laughs> Funny move, like... All of a sudden, c2 might be undefendable. 
I have to keep an eye on that. Maybe I'll start bishop takes and knight f4 and then castle long. I think that's what I'm about to do. Yeah, okay, he goes knight b4 hitting the pawn, but uh, yeah, well, maybe I was supposed to start with bishop takes and knight f4 so I can have some uh, some piece on d3 now, like either knight or bishop. Probably knight I would have played. But now knight b4, I think we just play rook c1. We see bishop takes on f4. Gonna be taking with a knight, hitting the bishop. Goes one step back. I think you can play a3 followed by bishop d3. Yeah, I think that's pretty typical. Maybe take with a pawn. Maybe taking with a pawn is like not too bad in this case. Taking with a knight also like interesting controlling the dark squares. Like e5 squared in particular. Because like c takes uh, d3 is got maybe like e5 potentially. And that's maybe really strong for him. So I don't really like taking with a pawn from that perspective. I think just taking with a knight. Controlling e5. If they go queen d6, do you guys want to like see an end game? <laughs> I don't think you're gonna play that, but it's like funny idea. It's 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 better when there's like this pawns included. Like if I had h5 g5 on the board, that is actually a very good move. But okay, maybe knight b5 now, and like queen g3, queen f2. Maybe we can still do queen h2. It does uh, look interesting. Let's play some end games. G5 was interesting instead of bishop d3. I don't know. Um, maybe it was indeed. Yeah, G5 was actually very interesting. Don't know why I haven't played it. I, I, I guess I just went for the <laughs> autopilot move. But it might end up being a very instructive game if we get into the end game and we manage to win it. It's not really like better, I think, but maybe just a bit easier to play due to the extra space that we have. Opponent also like not sure whether he wants to trade or not. That's like really interesting. I think he would cast a long simply. But maybe we just take. I don't think taking with a pawn is that amazing. Just taking with a rook. Knight d7. e5 not really a thing because of knight d5. We just need to like slowly improve our position now. Uh, maybe we could do knight a4 with knight c5 ideas. Or just simply knight e2, making room for uh, c4. But knight e2, then he gets e5, and so I don't like that. Maybe knight b5, castles, and then c4 is a, is a thing. And like a6, maybe that's a bit problematic. But like a6 cd, um, that's like looking good for us. And even like dc, knight, rook c4, a6, knight c3 also looking okay. Yep. Okay, if this move we want to go for the intermezzo and. Um, if dc rook takes, that's the plan, and if a6 just knight back. And if knight b6, I'm actually planning to sack the exchange. Yeah, also by the way, against the e6 we could potentially sack. I don't think it's like that amazing though. So if I go knight c3, the move that's actually annoying is not knight b6, because I think we get a good exchange sack. But um the knight a5 move, but, but I guess just like rook a4 there. And this rook can be brought quite easily into the game. I'm hoping he goes there, yeah, and now the point was to do this. And it felt like uh, this should be quite annoying for my opponent. I think it's like pretty fun, fun position to play. Easy moves for, uh, for white. Maybe not better objectively, but still um, quite annoying. And I think this is like best move. And I think maybe we go rook c2. And if they go knight d5, 
Could be just playing King F2. Okay, that I thought it's worse because we can take with a tempo. Are we just taking? Taking would be fine. Rook d6 and then knight back to e5. Kind of don't want to take. Maybe I should. The thing is he's kind of forcing this knight trade, which I don't want to allow. Maybe we can play um, like knight d5, knight d1, if that's like not too, not too slow. Maybe c5 is interesting for him. I wasn't sure if he can play it. Do I read chess books? Not that much anymore. I mostly write chess books, <laughs> but I used to read a lot. The opponent plays knight d5. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I can either play king f2 and allow the trade or I can play knight d1. I think we like want to keep more pieces. I think it's more annoying for him. And now this is like really annoying. Could potentially, yeah, just play king f2 defend and then bring this knight to life, to like d3 and then c5. And you see like opponent is going down on time. It's like a really uncomfortable position for him to play. It's not that the sacrifice was amazing, but I feel like the uh, practical value is like pretty huge. Okay, I'll just keep playing simple moves like King F2, defending this pawn. And then, yeah, could have, I, I was considering to play E4, but I don't wanna like soften my pawns if I'm like not gaining anything specific in return. So I couldn't see what I'm gaining immediately. At what rating I will end the speedrun? I think all speedruns are going to 2500. So I get that question a lot. <laughs> Just keeping my knight and then b4. If he doesn't flag. I hope he doesn't flag so we get to like actually squeeze him. Yeah, just b4 idea to like bring this knight over. God, I mean, opponent just flagged. <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess position was like very unpleasant, but I wish we could like maneuver him around. I guess we were better already. Oh, I could have played rook c5, by the way. No need to sack it right away. But I mean, I really like my sack. It was brilliant. <laughs> Do you see it? Oh, I guess you don't. Oh, you can see it, I think. Yeah, it's rook c6 was a brilliant move. Okay, chess.com also agrees. I think that's already like a ultimate level of validation. Also, I like knight d1 keeping knights. Because the other one was king f2 and... Yeah, like I guess this is still uh, playable, but I mean with not so many pieces. It's kind of easy for black to even uh, play something like this if they are running out of options. I mean, this is not good, but just to give an example. So I think practically keeping knights is a better chance. Has to watch out for all of this kind of moves. Yeah, let's just go d4. Try to get uh, an interesting job of a London. And we see g6. I guess we're just gonna be playing the Austrian attack. Only playing f4. We just transpose back into the pirk. Okay, we see bishop g7, which is very normal. Just gonna be playing knight f3. Most likely gonna get a bishop out of d3 if he castles. You can also play c5. Okay, c6, he's playing like the Czech Pirk. This is just like not an amazing opening though. I have like an enormous win rate against this with the Austrian attack. He can do e5, but I mean, I don't think it's any good. I think we do this. can have the pawn. I wonder how many kid players know the Austrian attack. I would say not too many. In general, people that play Kings Indian don't play Pirk. Or maybe it's just me. So we see Queen takes. And the general way to deal with this is by uh, just playing Queen D2. Defending the Knight and then threatening to play Rook B1 and winning the pawn, so they have to just go back. But then we've got like 
a bunch of interesting alternatives such as rook b1 such as e5 Ooh, this is not a good move that is for sure not a good move like at the very least we can just win back the pawn with like a much better position i'm trying to find a way to like uh tap his queen though i don't think we can trap the queen just gonna be keeping it simple white is just getting huge huge advantage this is also hanging and queen is misplaced Got it, like really nice pawn center. Expecting this move. I think just taking with the rook. This is also not horrific, but I'd keep it standard like that. Okay, I mean, if I do it this way, maybe he's got like knight g4 in some lines. If I have to think about it more, starting to like that move better. Okay, let's do it. I think it's, it's fun. Uh, okay, opponent goes... Um, e5 the general way to deal with that if i was having let's say this pawn on g2 <laughs> was to take and play f5 but i mean doesn't that just look like a hanging pawn it looks like that to me what is wrong with just like taking twice and playing f4 i would assume nothing so i'm gonna do it Knight 7 but just like f4, keeping everyth everything uh, defended. So opponent plays knight d7 as expected, but just f4, defending everything, getting keys of like knight c5. I think we might be having a surprising uh, winning move that is like knight b1. As weird as it may look, I don't think he's got like a way to defend the knight. And also I don't see a counter attack, so gonna be playing this strange looking knight b1. I think this is the killer in this position because his only move to like keep the knight defended was queen a5 but that is taken by my queen so I think this kind of uh, backwards knight moves are like the hardest to spot but I mean it's easy to see in this position but because it just feels like his pieces are so loose it, you, you just naturally look for something and then you you spot it easily, I would say. And now we're just kind of winning, I think. Okay, I think opponent is just uh, doomed now after knight b1. C queen takes on a2, but picking up the free knight. Just an easy win now. Funny tactic, bishop c4. Just trading a lot of stuff. And like queen takes, there's uh, queen d8. And after he takes, we take there and he's got some problems with f7. He's got like rook d7 only move, but that is still lost. This was like a bit unnecessary, okay, but we're just having a little bit of fun with it. Yeah, and now uh, bishop or rook takes? I think bishop. Then just like bringing out this rook. Or like anything really. So like rook d1, threatening mate, knight a6, bishop d4. I don't know, I guess I'll just play this and that. Seems to be the most clinical. Not sure we'd need this knight, but it's nice to have it, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I could have pushed uh, like e6 or something. But anything wins, I think, at this point. He tries c5. Uh, just bishop there. Bishop coming to d5 when he plays knight c6. Uh, we see that, but bishop back. And like knight b4 is losing another piece to rook b4. Then we pick up his rook. Bishop a7 missed. I've seen it, but I thought this is um, this is better. Okay, this knight's actually getting a bit annoying there. I don't like him having an active knight. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. Mm, well, we can just play king h1, I guess, against the check. So how do we do this? I guess we'll need the knight. So watch out for this knight route. All the way to f7. I think that's how we do it. Rook h7, yeah, that, that's working. But I want to go for the mate. I want to get my knight to f7 and then knight g5 and rook h7 mate. Okay, but now another knight move with tempo. And then knight e5 will come winning another tempo. 
this is big fat. By the way, another friend might be just to play uh, Rook G7 and he's in like a mating net because of night coming. Yeah, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Why would we trade this strong Rook for this, yeah, sort of useless Rook with Rook H7? I think it's better to like keep. Then yeah, like just getting the mate. Knight C3, can give a check. Can go Rook G7. I think Rook G7 is like nice. W watch out for this, boys. It's gonna be doing this. Do you feel what is about to happen? Oh gosh, he didn't. <laughs> now we're getting the mate, but I wish he was playing this. And then we get like rook g8, rook takes, and knight f7. That's what I was like hoping to get. But now it's just a normal smother mate, I guess. And uh, we end up uh, getting the win. All right, we got a white pieces. Gonna go d4 and knight c3. We see the lines with knight f6 and then d5, getting into the ultimate main lines of the Juba Valanden. Expecting e6, this is sort of the main move. I would say, yeah, the most common one that we're running into. He does play this Slav though, meaning that he's most likely going to develop the bishop to f5. And against that, we're going to be going for the kingside play, of course, just f3 followed by g4. And it's gonna be interesting whether he plays with like h6 or with h5. That would be interesting to see. Okay, I mean, this is the normal move. Maybe knight d7 is also doable, I don't really remember. I think that might be playable as well. Could also start with h6. I think, yeah, he does go for that. I'm gonna be playing g4 and then uh, h4. This guy is taking like really weird timing. Okay. Uh, opponent plays bishop g6. Just gonna be going h4. And I think they connect this line with h5, yeah. I think that's the trick. And then they play... They're playing like knight g8. And like the standard motif would be to play uh, bishop d3. But I think I'll, I'll try out another idea. Let's see how they are dealing with the unusual plan of bringing the knight towards h3. And now the idea is to get it to f4. I think this is like quite surprising for a lot of players because... What you'd normally see in the Jubava London is like everyone plays uh, bishop d3 in this position, I think. Or in this positions in general, it, it doesn't have to be that precise one. But here, okay, we get a super interesting game with the knight on e7. He might be playing knight f5, I'll play bishop f2. If he moves the bishop, I think maybe then we play bishop d3. We forced him to lose a tempo. Okay, on bishop h7, we also have ideas too have that pawn on h5 of course so that's why they play to f5 now e4 though is kind of tempting i think we're just gonna go for that when you can push in the center like this and gain a tempo it's usually the right thing to do gonna keep developing i think we're getting a really nice position right now with the center and his pieces look kind of cramped to me big frat this is also a frat I'm expecting this and g6, yeah, and this is probably next, otherwise the pawn drops and on g6 could start with long castle, probably that's easiest and just uh, play it slow with the f-file, put pressure on this pawn. Also I had ideas of e5 and knight e4, but I don't want to give away these squares when pushing e5, so I think I might be delaying that for a bit. It's also kind of hard for him to castle short. Because if he does that, I might be having ideas to sack the piece there. So I think we bring the rook. Could also play e5 now because we're killing the bishop. He's got knight f5. Can play knight e4 maybe. Like I'm fine with that trade. Yeah, I'll start this way. I am just waiting for him to commit, pretty much. And then maybe we do go e5. 
Because like taking I think is kind of fine. Do you guys want to go for the super aggressive play? So I think the main defensive resource for him in that position is to play queen e8 with the idea to push something like f5 or f6. So in queen e8 I can't really come up with, with a serious plan. Maybe just d5, f5 and queen back. But that's like really messy, I want to keep it really really clean. So I think for this reason I'm gonna be going e5 and knight f5, just knight e4. I would be happy to see that trade happening because this knight is a pretty good blockading piece for him but uh, I think now we might be threatening to actually do that because in a lot of positions compared to what we have seen previously we have ideas to play knight f6 okay, he goes there i think just king b1 is the automatic uh, good reply and see what he wants to do could also play this move next so that the bishop won't be hanging and we do that with tempo which is pretty nice I think he should start offering end games maybe with queen a6 because on queen b5 I can hit him with c4. So yeah, I would love to play this, but then this guy hangs. Could also sack. Do we want to like sack immediately? I mean, it looks fun, why not? He's got like even the fork with knight e3, but. Okay, knight f6, maybe he has king f8 and he's escaping. Oh wait, he doesn't have 93. Never mind. I'm just talking nonsense. We have uh, queen f7 on 93. Okay, let's do it. I mean, it's too fun. You've got me. We've got a sack now. This was so unnecessary, but it looks so fun. So we're gonna be playing it. I just want to play that move. Maybe also this idea is with like pawn takes 96. Rook f8. Knight takes on f5. Threat of made in one. Maybe that's not good, but if we have to like consider it at least. So we have sacked the piece. And some people might try to see the direct checkmate, but sometimes even you know slow play like let's say queen f3 and just pushing the h pawn might be good enough. If he doesn't have counterplay. I would love a quicker finish though. Maybe like knight d6. This is like he his best piece. Maybe we can even consider g6 ideas. And after pawn takes, queen takes. Okay, so he does go for the counter sack. I don't think that should be good. This should be the move. Just trading his bishop and might be instantly winning yeah i think that's insta win okay i think he's just like helping us to finish faster because now he's got no bishop that defends his king so he was definitely not forced to do that i can tell you that but i think if he had a defense the position was uh, pretty unclear maybe close to equal if he had one not sure that's actually defendable but it definitely felt like giving me interesting plays so okay i think here we just win the queen like knight f6 queen h8 knight g8 so we don't have checkmate but we have this move and uh, we can pick up the undefended queen yep and mate on f7 soon. Okay, do you want uh, do you want a funny one? We'll play uh, rook d8 first. Okay, he resigned. But like, <laughs> there was uh, queen f7 mate on the next turn, anyways. 
Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video and if you're looking for more content make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series.